around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. health insurance that offers you maximum benefits at minimum cost. Mutual of Omaha Income Protection Insurance with the unusual lifetime benefits feature. Add this long-term protection to your group coverage and save up to 54%, depending on your age and type of group coverage. Here's what you need. You need to get the most for your health insurance dollar by insuring with Mutual Benefit Health and Accident Association. For maximum benefits at minimum cost, Call your local Mutual of Omaha agent in the yellow pages or write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. Write for details on the low-cost, practical protection you need. You can save up to 54% when you add Mutual of Omaha protection to your group coverage. Write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Mr. Dillon. Take it easy, Chester. But there's been a train robbery, Mr. Dillon, about what? five miles east. They held up the baggage clerk and got away $50,000 in double eagles. Well, what did you hear about it? Just now, when number seven pulled into the station, you've got to get over there right away. And I guess they'll wait. Dodge the City's the end of the line. Well, yes, sir, I know Anybody that. Anybody say how many were in on it? Three, according to the clerk, all wearing masks. They snuck aboard when the train stopped for water at Cottonwood Tanks. Made them cut the rest of the train loose and go on with just the engine and the baggage car. Had horses waiting down the track somewhere. You ought to get over at the depot, Mr. Dillon. The baggage clerk shot pretty bad. Shot? Now, why didn't you say so? And another thing. They cut the wire so the train crew couldn't telegraph ahead. Same old story, Mr. Dillon. You'd think them bandits would figure out some new way. Why? This one usually works. I said to keep that mob out of this baggage car. They're out, Doc. Huh? Well, who are you? Oh, I didn't know it was you, Matt. How is he? He, he caught one through the lung. I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for yeah. that. I want to find out where it happened. I can tell you exactly, Marshal. How? Oh? About 100 yards east of milepost 314. It's on the curb where the line swings in toward the river bottom. Are you one of the passengers? Oh, I'm a legal agent for the railroad and for the bank that owns that money. My name is Crocker, J.L. Crocker. And I want immediate action on this matter. I want that money back at once. And I want the guilty parties brought to justice. Are you getting all this, Chester? Yes, sir. I'm making mental notes. Well, now, Marshal, I don't believe you quite understand who I am. Sure, you're the legal something or other for somebody, and you're bothering me. Now, will you stand back? Doc, is there any chance of talking to him? Well, you can try. All right. Mister, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Did you recognize any of them? No. They wore masks. Only one said anything. Gave all the orders. He's the one who shot me. Man, about 50. <laughs> Is that all you can tell me? I don't feel so good, Marshal. I think I... That's it, man. Yeah. 
Chester. Yes, sir. Go get our horses saddled up. We'll ride out to milepost 314. With luck, we can get there before dark, maybe pick up their trail some way. Aren't you? Well, now, Marshal, in my opinion, you ought to form a posse and go after these criminals. Mr. Crocker, I don't care about your opinions. Hmm. I think I'll have a little talk with your superiors when I get back to civilization. Good. Find out what's happened to my checks. I haven't been paid for two months. <laughs> The following message is brought to you by the Savings and Loan Foundation. Where you save does make a difference. Where you save does make a difference. Where you save does make a difference. Save Save more, have more, then more. At Savings and Loan. Yes, your dollars get good earnings at insured savings and loan associations. People like you are receiving over $700 million right now. It's money their money has earned. You can do it, too. Where you save does make a difference. Join the millions of thrifty people who make a profit on their savings at Insured Savings and Loan Association. Now's the time to start an account. Or add to the one you have at your nearby Insured Savings and Loan. Remember, where you save does make a difference. Where you save does make a difference. Where you save does make a difference. Save more, have more, earn more. That saving the loan. Chester, pull up a second. Yes, sir. Reckon they've heard us yet? Yeah, they don't show it. Both of them are still working around the campfire, paying no attention. Fixing supper, I guess. A man and a young boy. Must be homesteaders on the move. I've never heard of bandits hightailing it in a covered wagon. Besides, there's only two of them. Three men held up the train. Yeah, I know. Now let's ride on down to the fire. Well, now, howdy, strangers. Evening. Climb down and sit. You have some supper ready here in a spell, such as it is. Keep your eye on that coffee, Jerry. I'm watching it, Pa. Huh. You men pushing cattle? No, hunting killers. What? Had a train robbery this morning. Now, I'm a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. My name's Dillon. <laughs> Proud to know you, Marshal Dillon. I'm Dan Everly. This is my boy, Jerry. How are you, sir? Jerry, how are you? Well, we're heading for Dodge ourselves. How far we got to go yet? How about nine miles. You find it a homestead? That's right. Had a place back at Newton, but it didn't do so good. So, somebody robbed a train. Mm-hmm. Huh? Three of them. Got away with $50,000 in gold. Have you met anybody today? No, no, nary a soul. Now, Marshal, you just rest yourself there now, and we'll have some side meat and hominy in a few minutes. Oh, fine, thanks. This is it, Chester. We found them. These two? How do you figure? They're horses. Saddle stock never meant to haul a wagon. And the third one's over to the right in that thicket covering us. So it went on his gun barrel. What do we do? Move fast. You roll to the left, draw, and cover the two by the fire, and I'll take the one in the brush. You got it? Yes, sir. All right, then. No. Don't move, you do. You're covered. You there in the brush. Come out with your hands up. Not, now, wait, Marshal. Don't shoot. All right, then. Tell him to get out here with his hands up. They got us. There's no use fighting. Come out, like he says. Why didn't you let me fight, Pa? I could have shot them both. Oh, it's a girl. So it is. My daughter, Janet, I told her to hide out there till we found out what she wanted. I wanted to keep her out of this. So you and your two kids were the bandits, huh? You're quite a father, Mr. Everly. You leave him alone. Pa knew what he was doing. He had a right to that money. I see. How old are you, Janet? Eighteen. Any of your business. Uh, the young uns ain't to blame, Marshal. I brought them up to do like I told them. They didn't know. Somebody ought to have known. Now, where's the money? Don't tell him. Be quiet, me. Janet. Marshal, we buried that money, and I reckon I'm not going to tell you where it is. 
It's ours and we got a right to it. Yeah, you said that before. I had a homestead outside of Newton. My wife died there. The young'uns and me fought the prairie for four years. Crop failures, hard times. Then last fall, I finally got a good stand of wheat ripe for the harvest. You know what happened? No, what happened? Sparks from a train set fire to the grain field. Burned us out, lost everything. I wrote letters to the railroad office in St. Louis. They said I'd have to come back there and prove my claim. Now, they knew I couldn't do that. Well, did anybody ever tell you things were easy out here in the West, Mr. Everly? Chester, you and the boy hitch up that wagon and start loading it. All right, sir. Come on, son. What are you... What are you aiming to do with it? Take him to Dodge City. To jail. <laughs> happened in Death Valley in the blazing desert sun. No others dared to do it, so there could be only one. Just one that passed the killing grind of sun and wind and sand. The test that proved this new car wax the finest in the land. Turtle wax, turtle wax, turtle wax. Reader's Digest ad tells the story of the amazing turtle wax protective power that kept cars' colors shining bright even in fiery Death Valley sun. Just one waxing of turtle wax with new sun stop gives your car a beautiful hard shell finish guaranteed to last up to one full year. It's quick and easy to turtle wax your car yourself. Remember, just one waxing of turtle wax with sun stop lasts up to one full year. Turtle wax gives a hard shell finish. Turtle wax gives a hard shell finish. Turtle wax. All right, pull up, Everly. Oh, boy. All of you, get on. I guess my reasons for robbing that train don't count for much, do they, Marshal? Judging's not part of my job, Everly. But not the young ones. It wasn't their fault. You killed a man, Everly. What do you expect? Marshal, I didn't aim to kill him. He went for his gun as we was leaving, but I didn't aim to kill him. Well, Marshal, I see you brought in the culprits. Yeah, it looks that way, Mr. Crocker. Oh, where's the money? I want to get it locked up in the bank right away. They say they buried it. They... What? Matt? Matt, are you all right? I heard of the saloon that you bought in the bandits. That's right. Is she one of them? That girl? Yeah. Well, she's just a kid, Matt. You're not going to lock up a girl. Kitty, I don't like the idea any better than you do. That jail wasn't built for women. I know that. Matt, let me take her. What? She won't try to get away with the others in jail. She can stay in my room till I'm working. I'll take care of her, Matt. Janet? You go with Kitty here. Yes, sir. Stay with her and do whatever she says. Thanks, Matt. Thanks a lot. Come on, honey. Just so you take these other two inside and lock them up. Yes, sir. Come on. Let's go. Oh, now, Marshal, pretty or not, that girl is a criminal. Why aren't you locking her up? Well, we've got a different attitude toward women out here, Mr. Crocker. We never got around to building jails for them. Well, what about the money? $50,000 missing. That's right, it is. Oh. It's a long ride into town, wasn't it, Marshal? Moonlight, pretty girl in a wagon, chance to talk. Maybe Why, you... Little... You... you there. Yes, sir. Drag him over there to the water trough and stick his head under the pump. Now, here's a lilting little tune sung by a group that really knows how to keep you looking your best-dressed best. There's a difference, see the difference, with Stay New. Stay New. S-T-A-N-U. The quality finishing. Offered only by quality dry cleaners from coast to coast. 
stay new costs nothing extra. Restores the light new look to all your clothes. Makes them soil and wrinkle resistant. Brings back original store fresh texture, sparkling color, and cashmere like feel. Stay new dry cleaners are listed in the yellow pages under the stay new trademark. Why don't you send your next dry cleaning order to your nearest stay new dry cleaners? All dry cleaners don't have stay new, only the best do. You can see the difference, feel the difference. <laughs> How are you and Kitty getting along, Janet? Oh, just fine. She's been wonderful. The noise downstairs bother you? Keep you awake at night? No. No, the only thing that keeps me awake is worrying about Pa and Jerry. What are you going to do with it? And I got no say about that. There's no proper court here. I, I'll probably get orders to send you up to Hayes City for trial. Oh, they won't understand. Maybe Pa was wrong. I guess he was, but, but he thought he was doing right. Sure, we all think that. He was doing it for us, for Jerry and me. And he didn't mean to kill that man, Marshal. Really, he didn't. Well, I, uh... I better be going now. Goodbye, Janet. Bye. Well, Max? She's quite taken with you, Kitty. Stories around town say you're a little taken with her, Max. That's Mr. Crocker's doing. He's been shooting his mouth off for a week mm -hmm. now. He's offered a thousand dollar reward for the return of that money, no questions asked. Yeah, I know. But how much do you know? What do you mean? Well, people will know you don't pay any attention, Matt, but some of these hangers on around the saloon wonder if you did make a deal for that money. Uh, who cares what they think? But it's bad, Matt. Crocker keeps prodding them. Some of them are beginning to say that Everly's might remember where the money is if they had ropes around their necks. A uh, lynch mob, huh? Well, they're going to have to move fast. I got orders about an hour ago to send the three up to Hayes City in the morning. Oh, Matt. Does she know about it? No. I just didn't have the heart to tell her. Mr. Dillon. What's the matter, Chester? Miss Kitty sent me to get you. Oh? Yeah, that fellow Crocker's over at the Long Branch. He's got a bunch of the boys all liquored up. They're talking about crashing the jail. Well, usually the best way to stop that kind of trouble is to break it up before it starts. Well, that group just upstairs right over the head, Miss Jones. Yeah, I know. They hadn't bothered her, had they, Chester? Well, they hadn't when I left. Yeah. All right, you let me handle it. You stay clear and cover my back. Yes, sir, I will. All right, come on. A deal like that ought to be run out of town. And you're just the boys to do it. Now, it's about time somebody took the star off of that tin horn marshal and shoved it down his throat. And as far as I'm concerned, I... I... Go on, Mr. Crocker. You're doing real fine. <laughs> There's quite a crew you picked up. All the bums, bar flyers, swindlers, and bushwhackers in Dodge City. Well, your friends don't seem to be as talkative as they were a couple of minutes ago, Mr. Crocker. Uh, Dylan, if I had you in St. Louis for one hour, you'd be in jail, not running. All right, boys, the party's over. Now move on. Oh, no, no, now, you've got no right to order those men around, Dylan. I don't hear any of them objecting. Matt, Matt, she's gone. What? Janet's not in the room. She's gone. Well, where would she go? I can tell you, Matt. You had a jailbreak. That girl got her dad and brother out, and they just left town on their horses. Carl! 
Car owners, have you ever heard of K-Site Smooth Seal? Why, no. Why, no. Is it new? What's it do? Well, this is off the record. Just between us boys, your automatic transmission, does it ever make a noise? You mean a little kind of grinding? Does that little chatter matter? I hear a very weird whir sometimes. It doesn't sound good, boys, but let's be sure. When you're sitting at the light and it goes to green, you put your foot down hard. Have you ever felt a sort of a jerk, a kind of a jar, or heaven help you, a real thud bump? Oh, I've felt uh, it. Oh, me too. I've had it, stranger. What do we do? Well, don't buy a horse and don't trade your car. Just get yourself some new K-Site Smooth Seal. New K-Site Smooth Seal? New K-Site Smooth Seal? New K-Site Smooth Seal? How will that help? Why, it's made to soften those shrunken seals, which are apt to leak when there's power on the wheels. It stops those thud bumps, jerks, and jars that are apt to creep into these modern cars. Well, this K-Site Smooth Seal in one application can pack them all off on a long vacation, and it's less than $2 at your service station. A little new K-Site Smooth Seal, boy? Come on. I'll go. And if it doesn't work, you get double your money back. <laughs> Getting pretty close to the place for the camp that night. Right ahead of us there, Chester. Sure do hope that cutted storm holds off. First, you know, they may not have came back here at all. Well, then we'll backtrack to Cottonwood Tanks. They'll want that gold. It's got to be somewhere between here and the railroad. Yonder's where the wagon was standing. Yeah. All right, pull up, Chester. Let's take a look around. Don't look there. Huh? A hole dug in the ground. Right where they had the campfire that night. Yeah. They buried the gold there, Chester, and built their fire right on top of it. Get out! It came from that thicket over there. I'm going to fire and roll away, maybe draw a shot. Now you keep your eyes open. Big tree off there. Yeah, I saw it. Mm-hmm. You got him. Yeah. Come on, Chester. Everly. Now you're covered, Everly. One move and you're finished. I'm finished anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to do it. No matter. Weren't the youngins to have a chance? They rode on with the money, I suppose. Let them go, Marshal. It's their money. I had a right. Maybe, but you had no right to kill. I didn't aim to, Marshal. The law has to go by acts, Everly, not intention. Storm coming up? Yeah, it looks that way. I hope the youngins find shelter... Jerry caught cold there in jail. Used to worry his mother when he coughed. So she's dead now. Died back there. Back. Back. Mm-hmm. Guess he paid for it, Mr. Miller. Yeah, he paid. Well, let's try to pick up the trail of the other two before that storm. Horses. A couple of horses coming in fast. All right, hold it. It's all right, Marshal Wade, on. Pa, where is he? We heard the shooting and turned around and rode back. You better get off your horses, both of you. Tell me, what happened to... Oh. I'm sorry, Janet. I knew. I knew when he made us right on ahead that that we'd never see him again alive. You kids carry in the money? It's there in my saddlebags. Get it, will you, Chester? Yes, Mr. He thought he was doing the right thing. He thought he was doing it for us. I know, but he was wrong. And now there's the two of you to decide about. Here's the money, Mr. Jones. Chester, count out $1,000. Yes, sir. You know, technically, I guess I ought to take you back to Dodge. But I figure everybody's got certain rights. And it's my job to try to keep all those rights sorted out and evened up. Well, 
I can do is call him the way I see him. Chester, give him the $1,000. There you are. But I, I, I don't understand. Crocker offered $1,000 and no questions asked for the return of his money. Well, you returned it. And there's the reward. Yes, but I... Now, if you ride north and keep barren west, you'll eventually hit Wyoming. I hear it's fine country. Plenty of range land, homesteads. The two of you ought to do all right. And Jerry. Yes, sir? You take care of her. Yes, sir, I will, Mr. Dillon. I understand what you're doing for us. And I... Now, go on, you two. Get out of here before I think it over and change my mind. Now, go on. Right. Thank you, Marshal. Thanks. Go on. Goodbye, Mr. Dillon. And thank you. Go on. Get out of here. You better get a move on, Mr. Dillon. It's starting to rain. I hope they find shelter somewhere. Mr. Dillon, it's starting to rain, Mr. Dillon. You better get a move on. Service manager. Tell you about guardian maintenance? Well, sure, I'll be glad to. Guardian maintenance is a kind of specialized service your General Motors car gets at a GM dealers like ours. Yeah. Now, it makes good sense, doesn't it, that our mechanics know your GM car best? You see, they specialize in one make a car. And what's more, they've got the right tools and factory-approved parts, too. Yes, sir. That holds true for every Chevy, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, and GMC truck. It's the best kind of service for the best kind of cars. And all GM dealers are offering performance service specials right now. Uh-huh. Includes engine tune-up, tire rotation, a front-end adjustment, a wheel check, and a complete, and I mean complete, lubrication. Makes for a worry-free vacation, I'll tell you. Huh? Yeah, good. Good. We'll be looking for you. Bye. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Barbara Eiler, Sam Edwards, and Bart Robinson. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.